Hello everyone, I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician, and welcome to another one of our video shorts on current topics here at electrical-online.com. In today's project, we're going to take an ordinary ceiling fan with a light kit that is now controlled by two wall switches, one that operates a fan, one that operates the light, and we're going to turn it into a remote-controlled ceiling fan and light. We're using the Hunter Remote Control, Universal Remote Control Kit, it's a model 27157. And all it consists of is this remote controlled fob that turns the fan on or off and the light on or off. And that can be kept by the bedside table. The kit also consists of the receiver unit that has to be installed up in the fan canopy. So on this universal remote receiver you have the antenna that gets tucked up inside the canopy. Then you have your wires. A black and white are your power in and the other three wires are neutral out and your fan wire which is the red wire and your light wire which is the black wire so this runs a light kit this runs the fan the neutral out to the fan and then you have line and neutral in for your power into the remote so we'll show you how to install this one thing to check before you get started is that your dip switches are in the right positions and I'll show you that again later but here's the dip switches on the back of the remote receiver and there's also dip switches inside the battery compartment you have to make sure that they match so let's get started all right so now up here at the ceiling fan it's time to take down that canopy we've got to see what we have here for splices. I'm sure we have a neutral splice to the fan and light. Uh, combination neutral for both. And then we have a switch leg coming up here. A red wire switch that will likely be running the light kit. And a black wire that will be switched and that runs the fan currently. So for our installation we only need one of the hot wires and a neutral to power up the remote. And from there the remote will do the switching of the light and the separate speeds of the fan. So first we have to bring this canopy down. Now this is just a trim ring that's locked on. You just turn it about a quarter of a turn one way and that drops right off. Then we have to take out the four screws that hold the canopy to the base plate. So two of them are tightened right in, one on each side. And then one on each side you just need to loosen. And again one of the screws Remove it completely. And the other one just needs to be loosened. And it'll turn on the canopy and it drops down into place. So here's the wiring we have currently for the fan, as I mentioned. Here's my red wire that's coming up from the three switches on the wall, coming up on a three wire, so you have a white, red, and a black, plus a ground, of course. Here's my red wire, which is spliced to the blue of the fan kit currently. Here's the neutral wire. That's a common neutral for both the fan and the light. And here I've got the black wire from that three wire I mentioned. And that's spliced to the black wire of the fan. So what we want to do is remove these splices, take them apart, pick one of the two hot wires, black or the red, they'll probably take the black wire, cap the other one off, and then we tie that to our remote, our remote control receiving unit. So as I always like to do, I like to remove the hot wires first. I've already checked the breaker is off and I've tested it to make sure we have no power up here. So there's my fan kit, blue wire, black for the fan is removed, now the neutral. Okay, now I'm ready to get the remote receiving unit and install that. Okay, so we've got our wires all separated here. Our red wire has been meretted off and tucked into the top of the box. So these are the two we're going to use. Our neutral from the three wire and our hot from the three wire. And then these three are the wires going to the fan. First off, we'll splice the common in for the supply power to the remote receiver. 
and splice it to the neutral wire of our three wire cable coming up to the fan outlet box. Making sure the ends are all even and you're splicing a stranded wire to a solid so you want to make sure that they do bite the moret bites on both of them. Twist it together firmly about a turn and a half on the conductors as you can see and then a tug test to make sure they're in place. I'm not going to pull out. Now the live in wire as it's labeled on the remote. Live in goes to our black wire from the three wire cable. Again, making sure the ends are even. And then spin our moret on. About a turn and a half again on our conductors. And that should be tight enough. Tug test. We've got some smaller morets here for the remote out. This is the common out to the fan, fan neutral, fan and light neutral. They're both stranded wires, so you can go ahead and spin those together with your fingers. And turn on that smaller wire nut. And again, the tug test. Now, the black wire with a white stripe coming out of the remote receiver is labeled light out. So that's going to go to the blue light kit wire heading down to the light kit inside the fan assembly. Again, two stranded wires. Twist them together with your fingers and then put on the wire nut. Tug test. And last, the red wire, which is labeled the fan out from the remote receiver to the black wire in the fan light. And that operates the fan. Okay, our splices are all made. Now it's just a matter of tucking all these wires up inside the box. Patience is a virtue here because you don't have a whole lot of room to work with. This remote receiver has got to end up fitting inside this housing and no wires pinched or anything and then you tuck your antenna cable inside the canopy. So I'll mess with that and get it to fit in there properly and then we'll show you what it looks like when it's all done and we'll put the canopy back together. One thing to check just before you do push everything back up and out of the way, you'll see on this remote there's four dip switches. So one, two, and three are up and four is down. I'll show you on the remote later that those must match. So you must have one, two, and three up and four not connected or down as is the case with the remote receiving unit. Make sure those are set the same way. They come from the factory set the same way, but they're designed so if you have one or two or more of these in your house, you can set them to a different setting so they don't interfere with the operation of each other. So here's the remote all tucked nicely in place inside the canopy. Now I didn't show you the process of getting that tucked in there because it's a tedious one to say the least. You need to make sure that your splices are poked up nicely into the outlet box and that no wires are pinched because there's not a lot of room to work with here. So you just want to have that receiver unit tucked up nicely in the bracket. It's not too tight but nothing's being pinched. Nothing's going to be in the way when we put the canopy back in place. And as I mentioned, you're just tucking that antenna wire in to inside the canopy here. And then putting our canopy back up and the trim ring in place. Here we are with the canopy reinstalled, all four screws put in place and the trim ring back where it belongs. Now we'll go do the work on the switches here and make sure we uh, have the proper switch ready to run the fan and we're going to blank off the switch that used to be the light control just so there's no confusion and it's kind of the proper way of doing things. So we'll show you that next. So as I mentioned in the introduction to this video, this fan and light combo used to be controlled by the wall switches. So in this room here we have a three gang wall switch. The first one ran the 
top half of some receptacles in the room so that you can plug in desk lamps. The second one used to run the light and the third one ran the fan. So when we open this up you're going to find that the red wire was going to be attached to the top of this switch, the black wire to the top of this switch. So now what we want to do is remove that, get rid of the red wire, we're going to cap it off, we're going to replace that switch with one of these blank covers so you're not tempted to use that switch. And then we're going to make the one switch that ran the black wire, that's going to be our master control now for our new remote controlled ceiling fan. So let's remove this plate and I'll show you what the wiring was like inside this box. So here's a situation we have once we get the face plate removed and the device screws pulled off the box. Here's our three switches. This one was for the wall receptacles, the switched receptacles. This was the light kit for our fan light combo. You see the red wire on top. This one has a black wire on top. That was for the fan previously. So they've used the push-in connections on these switches, the push-in terminals. I'm not a fan of those, so we're going to cut these wires off. We're going to strip and terminate them properly onto the screw terminals. And then we're going to cap off this red wire, red it off, because that's the one we've abandoned up in the fan canopy, in the fan outlet box. And we're going to put a blank switch plate in here. And we're going to leave this one as our master control for the fan. I may switch those positions so that the first switch runs the switched outlets, the second one is our master control, and then the third one will be a blank plate. Here's what we've done then. Kept this switch position the same. I redid the splices and put the wires on the screw terminals instead of using the push-in connections. I moved the switch that was the third one, running the black wire, which is now the master control to our remote-controlled fan. Moved it to the second position, and then I've capped off the hot wire and the red wire that's the hot that supplied that previous switch, the original switch, and the red wire and the three wire that goes up to the ceiling fan. They're both just capped off along with their ground wire. And I'm just going to tuck those into the back of the box and put on this blank plate. So that avoids any confusion when you come in the room as to which switches actually do anything. The first two are active switches. The third one is just a blank position now. So we'll put this plate back on. Turn the power back onto the circuit and we'll test our work. Okay, so our switch plate is installed. Switches are all back in position. Now we've got that blank cover plate here for the one we don't need. Let's turn on our master switch and test our work. So here's a nice tight close-up of the Hunter remote control here. See the fan button on top, on or off, and the light button below that. And here's where you need to check your switches. Now these aren't actually dip switches here. These are pin jumpers that have to be in the same positions as the on-off dip switches in the remote receiver. So as you can see there, there's one, two, three, and four. There's a pin jumper slid onto one, two, and three, and four is left open, which is the same as the dip switch being off on position four with the remote receiver. And then, of course, you need to insert your battery in the battery compartment, and your remote is ready to go. So with our master switch on, it's time to test out our system here. We've got our remote control. Of course, you still have to have the pull chains in their correct position. So the fan switch must be in either high, medium, or low speed. And your reverse selector switch, that's still a manual function that you'll have to use with this universal remote. And your pull chain for your light kit will have to be on. So testing out the light, that's on. Shut it off and turn on the fan. And that works as well. And fan off. So everything works. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Current Topics at electrical-online.com. I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician, and thanks for watching.